For a lot of folks around the country, it was the ball in Times Square that signaled our entry into a presidential election year. But in Iowa, they don't need a ball. They've had campaign ads ad nauseum in recent weeks. But in just a few hours, all the attacks, all the jockeying will give way to actual votes. Mitt Romney is neck and neck with Ron Paul uh, in most of the polls there. But Rick Santorum has rocketed into the hunt. And my co-anchor Terry Moran is in Iowa with all of it. Terry? Bill, the Republican race here in Iowa has been an absolute roller coaster with conservative voters falling in and out of love with every candidate, everyone that is except for Mitt Romney. And tonight, even while Romney leads in the polls, the man of the moment is Rick Santorum. He has basically moved here, spent a lot of time here, and in the final hours of this campaign, it is finally paying off for him. We joined him on the trail today. What a difference a week makes. Just a few days ago, Rick Santorum couldn't buy media coverage and could walk into his events unmolested. Today, we tried to talk to him to take the pulse of his surging campaign, look ahead to the coming contest, and got into a crazed media scrum. And Senator, do you think you have the, the organizational legs to go for it? People say that you've spent all your time here. I've been, I've been in South Carolina more than any other candidate in the campaign. I've been second, according to Washington Post. Uh, in the amount of time I've spent in New Hampshire. We feel very, very good. We've got a good team in all, in all those places and that we can uh, we can take us from here. And Santorum's rise in the polls came the hard way. Happy Fourth of July. Months and months of hard work on the ground, meeting voters in more than 370 town meetings in every one of Iowa's 99 counties. And for months and months, it got him nowhere. Rick Santorum of Pennsylvania. You could see it in the debates where he was almost an afterthought, way, way off to the side there. Then just before Christmas, I saw him as a champion for the family. The got a couple of key endorsements from influential pastors here. Years of taking a hard line on social issues like abortion and gay marriage paid off. And the former senator from Pennsylvania, who got creamed in his last campaign, caught fire here. When did you know this campaign was taking off? Uh, you know, we, we felt the crowds were getting bigger and things were, uh, things were happening. We felt good for the last couple of weeks. So Santorum's surge is perfectly timed, but is he just the latest flavor of the month? Nine, 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 plan. Thank you. I do want you to be with me. Thank you. Republicans here have made just about everyone in the race a front runner at some point in their apparent quest to find anyone but Mitt Romney. Today, Romney boldly declared they failed. We're going to win this thing. His crowds are big and growing. He's got a ton of money, and he's been running here for years, as we saw firsthand tonight. He ought to do well. Please welcome Ron Paul. But the passion, it seems, the fervor is elsewhere. Ron Paul has lit up many young people and disaffected voters with his ideologically pure libertarian message. We accepted the idea that the federal government's responsibility was to intervene in the economy. At Paul's Iowa headquarters, it seemed I was the oldest person there. Everybody around him is young. Why? I believe we're going to be the first generation who probably won't do as well as our parents. And Dr. Paul's the only candidate who offers us something different. Freedom is a, is a very young idea. We caught up with Paul tonight, and he seemed a little nonplussed by his rock star status. You know, one thing that's really striking is in your crowds, the number of young people. I mean, they're, they're coming out in droves, and they're lit up. Why? I, I haven't figured it out yet. I believe that young people are more open to consistency and principle. I think all of us like that. I think all young people, whether you're a toddler or a teenager, like independence. Paul is as ideologically pure as they come, and that has led some to wonder if he is a serious candidate for president or a kind of libertarian prophet out to shake the system, not govern it. When you lay your head down on the pillow at night, you see yourself in the Oval Office? Not, not really, but I think it's a possibility. Sometimes I kid about it, and I said, that's the risk I take, <laughs> you know. An amazing admission from a presidential candidate. And not one you'd hear from Santorum. And now come the attacks on Santorum, now that he's doing so well, including this shockingly cruel comment from liberal pundit Alan Combs on Fox News, describing inaccurately 
how Santorum and his wife grieved their dead newborn child in 1996. Like taking his two-hour-old baby who died right after childbirth home and played with it for a couple of hours so his other children would know that the child was real. This afternoon, at a town hall in Newton, Santorum was asked about that. And, uh, we got together and we brought Gabriel home with us to bury him. Nearby, his wife Karen wept. Those values have gone straight to the heart of what socially conservative Iowans care about. Lynn Roger got on the Santorum train early, back in October. What was it like to be a Santorum supporter for all those months when he was at like one, two percent in the poll? It was tough to see him that low. I wanted, I wanted the media, I wanted to call the media and say, you're missing it, you're missing it, you know, you're missing out. You've got to speak with him, go see him, because when you see him, you change your mind. So it was hard, but I felt good in my heart. But whether Iowa conservatives will go with their hearts tomorrow or with the man many think has the best chance to beat Barack Obama, that is the question here tonight. Terry, thanks to you, and we'll know a lot more 24 hours from right now in a special edition of Nightline, Your Voice, Your Vote, the Iowa Caucus Edition. Join us if you can.